Hi detectives, today's Labs TouchCast is talking about how to create and set up your source and note cards. So starting today, um, we're going to be starting to work on our note cards, obviously. So I gave you an article yesterday called Violent Gaming. You want to take that out. And your step one you're going to do with that article is in the right hand corner. You are going to code it with the letter A as I've done here. So you're going to put an A there. All right, because that's the first source we're going to work with. All our source cards are going to be coded with a letter from the alphabet. Now, your teacher is going to give you a colored card because traditionally a source card would look something like this. So let me clear the board and let me go back. A source card is going to look like this. So it's going to be a color card. Notice it's going to have, again, the source code code letter for whatever article. So if I have five articles, I'm going to use letters A, B, C, D, E, and E. Okay. Now this is the source citation for the article Violent Gaming that you're going to be working with today. So for today, I'm actually giving you the source citation. So I want you to take a minute and copy this down. All right. So the author's name is Gilead, comma, J, period. Uh, and then parentheses, the year is 2007. The month is December, that's when the article was originally published. There's a period, the title of the article comes next, Violent Gaming, Team Inc, period, and then page 29, period. And you're gonna write this on the colored index card that your teacher's gonna give you, okay? Uh, don't worry, I'll probably give you a cheat sheet with this citation on it in, um, in Schoology so that you have it. So I'm gonna keep going with my video here. So if you didn't get a chance to copy it down, relax, I'm gonna put the citation in Schoology for you. Now, once we have our source card filled out, our next step is to, I know you think it's to jump to the index, jump to the index card, the index card bundle, but that's not it. Our next step is to actually look back, go back to our article. So we're gonna go back to our article. And at this point, You've got the code, and I forgot to clear the whiteboard, so excuse me. Um, you've got the code, so this article should be coded. And what you need to have next to you is your outline. So this is your roadmap. So while you have your article out, you should have your outline right next to you. And any of the research questions that you created when we were doing the Q um, questioning formulation technique. And if you don't have the list, um, and when I see you in class, we'll work to get the list out to you guys. But for right now, let's use our outline. So we're looking for information that either answers the research questions at the top of the outline. So for example, I've got, if you look at your outline, there are research questions at the top. We're looking for um, ideas that will fit on the outline itself. So facts about the history of video games facts for why people are for video games. We're looking for pack facts or ideas why people are against them. And we're looking for ideas that maybe talk about the future of gaming itself. So these, this is what we're searching for and looking for as we evaluate every um, article that we see. So let's bring that article back. So once our article is coded, okay, our next step is to begin reading it. So you're gonna read the article and you're gonna go through and you're gonna highlight ideas that fit the research criteria. Hint, the research criteria is on your outline. So, and then you wanna number them, okay? As you find them, you're highlighting and numbering them. The goal is to make sure your article is not completely highlighted. Highlighters are tools, not toys. So I expect you to use them responsibly. All right. So once your article, you're done with the article, you've skimmed it, skimmed it, you've read it, you've highlighted your ideas, your next step, step three, is to take, open up your index binder, bundle rather, and in the upper right corner, you're gonna write A1 on that card. You're gonna find the first idea you highlighted, okay, so in my example, the first idea I highlighted was this one. Most kids can, most children can distinguish between virtual violence and real violence. So I'm gonna put the code, and then my next step is I'm gonna go through, and I am going to,
I'm gonna write it on the card. So I'm gonna copy the ID on the card. I'm gonna make sure I have the author's last name and year. You're gonna need that for in-text citations, okay? So that's so far, I have an idea card. I don't have a fully, I don't have a full note card yet. To get to a full note card, the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to then take the idea from the card and I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm going to put it in my own words. So my paraphrase here is kids aren't dumb. They know the difference between real and fake violence. Notice I changed the color. So this is a tip I usually do. I usually write the um, idea I'm borrowing in one color, the paraphrase in another. And again, I want to put it in my own words. And then finally, what makes this a note card is you're going to have your analysis and you're going to put why this is important. And again, notice it's a different color ink. So there are three things that need to be on an index card before you can actually, a note card rather, before you can call it a note card. One is the original idea that I'm borrowing. So that's the first thing I need. The second thing I need is I need my paraphrase. And then finally, I'm gonna have to have some sort of analysis that explains why this idea is important. And then you put it all together and you have a note card. So again, my why this is important, this proves that kids can handle playing violent games. They know what is right and wrong. Real short, real simple. You only want one idea or fact per card. I stress that, one idea. And if I'm taking it word for word, it needs to be in um, quotation marks. Now, last thing. So once I have my first index card, my next step is I'm gonna go back to my article and I am going to then go grab the next point. I'm gonna go find idea two. My next card will be A2. The card after this would be A3. The card after this would be A4. All right, I have a cheat sheet that I'll be giving to you in class today. Good luck and I'll see you soon. I forgot to show you, I just wanna go over real quick. I forgot to show you what a completed index card would, should look like. But again, as I told you before for the setup, Real quick, you want to make sure you have your completed note card will have its source card and letter. You're going to have the idea you're borrowing first. You're going to have your paraphrase of the idea. And this is the most important part. Without this, you don't have a note card. You're going to explain why the idea is important or how you plan to use the idea in your paper. What does this idea prove? And when you are done, your note card is going to look something like this. So this is my A2, it's my second note. The idea I'm borrowing is I believe that games don't kill people, people kill people, and I have my quotation marks. Um, the paraphrase is video games aren't the problem, people are. And then of course, my reasoning is here. Um, it's not the games, but the people who are the problem, people are violent. So again, your card will look like this. Remember, for each source that you use, It'll have a different source letter, and you'll have numbers. I don't care how many ideas you have from a source. You just have to use the sources you have. The other articles in the binder and the bundle that you have have the citation at the end of the, each article, so you would just transfer them to each card. So for today, I, I want you to work with just source A. All right, now goodbye. Now good luck.